COVID stories number two, a very successful party. Peter's old man was a dick. He didn't know anything about anything, but he thought he knew everything. When Peter got back home for that Paddy's day, his old man was going on about COVID like he was a virologist giving a lecture to other virologists. Blah, blah, blah. So when Peter said he was going out, you'd think he'd suggested rolling around on the floor of a hospital on an inflected blanket. Tried to ground him. What? He was 21 years old. Egypt. He didn't tell his old man it was a COVID party. Sarah thought it was hilarious. It was her house, her party. Sarah was very much against the hysteria, laughing at the bulk buying, the obsessive use of disinfectant hand gels, the face masks, WTFF. When she pulled open the door, she was wearing a very tight snake pattern dress. Her eyes blackened and a shadowy streak of makeup seemed to pull her eyes back into two dark slits. She insisted on kissing everyone on the cheek as they arrived. The kiss of death, she called it. Ha ha. There was method to her madness. They had all talked about it seriously on Messenger. And the consensus was that herd immunity was the only way forward. So they were doing their bit for society. And of course, getting mashed in the process. It was Paddy's day after all. And the bars were closed. What else were they going to do? Dan brought some MDMA over from Derry. Good man, Dan. Enough to get about 12 of them off their heads. Though by the time it kicked in, there must have been about 50 people there and everyone seemed high as a kite. They shouted a girl down when she put on Billie Eilish. You'll ruin the algorithm. Sarah rescued the party with a retro 90s acid house set. They giggled as they imagined their lame parents throwing shapes to the tunes. They all howled with laughter when anyone said, Tune! And someone said it for each and every song until the whole party was in uproarious spirits. That's when we care from down the road turned up, sweating like a racehorse. No one sweats like a rapist anymore. No, no. But that was probably a better description of Kevin. He stumbled in through the door, sniffed a little, wiped his nose on his wrist and pulled someone else's can of beer out of the fridge. This is a COVID party, is it? He asked. The response he got was so overwhelmingly effusive that Kev brightened up, feeling suddenly popular. I got it. Tested for it today. The mood dampened for a split second until Sarah led the cheer. She pulled Kev into the middle of the sitting room carpet, the designated dance floor, and draped herself over him. Sarah pressed her face against his and breathed him in. Essence of COVID Kev. That's what he would later come to be known, much later. Sarah reached out and pulled more people into Kev's orbit. Gradually, the whole party became a swaying, sweating mass of flesh roiling against each other like a pool of snakes. Peter felt himself getting gradually subsumed, pulled and pushed and enveloped in this mass of people, his people. When he found himself pressed face to face with Sarah, he had all this wonderful love for his world, for his people. He kissed her deeply and she kissed him back until he was slowly pulled away from her and Brownie in motion took him back to the fringes of the crowd. He watched from the second step of the stairs. Happy St. Patrick's Day. So happy. What was truly amazing is that, apart from COVID Kev, no one from that party ever got sick. But almost everyone lost a parent, and everyone lost a grandparent, some too. In a six-week period, the herd lost 67 people. Peter got landed with his father's business to look after, he had three younger siblings to get through college. He always meant to pass it on to one of them, but it just never worked out that way. Sarah's father was devastated after her mother died, and she also ended up parenting her sibling, a brat of a sister. The next time they met, after all the funerals, was around Christmas. They had both aged several years in a few terrible months, but of course neither would say that. They fake smiled and talked about how great they both looked. A white lie. Peter often thought about asking Sarah out, but they didn't really have any time for that. Covid Kev told everyone what had happened at the party. So while he was dying, Peter's dad knew exactly what he had done in the name of herd immunity. Everybody knew. Nobody really blamed them. They were just kids. But the stink of decadence and death stayed on them for a very long time. 
When Peter developed cancer many years later, he looked back on his life while he was desperately holding on to it with both hands. The herd really did become immune. But there's dying and there's really living. And Peter wasn't sure he'd done either one that well. The last time he had felt truly free was at that party, swallowed by the herd, one part of a whole. What a wonderful, terrible party it had been.